Hey everybody, it's Lily, and today I'm excited to open the Parku Dual Tip Art Markers. And from what I could tell, these markers are alcohol-based and they're similar to Ohuhu markers. And so Parku reached out to me and they wanted to send me some markers and I thought it would be fun to open them up and take a look at them. And I'm not sponsored or anything. Just gonna give you my humble opinion about these markers. All right, let's open the box. Okay, so they sent me the pack of 80 dual tip art markers. It has a chisel tip and a bullet nib, and I think it's pretty fun that it comes in this nifty plastic case. One thing about the Ohuhu markers that I liked was that it came in a cloth case, and this one is plastic, and it has individual spaces for each one of the markers. All right, so let's see. On the back here, it says all sorts of stuff about these markers, about um, how they're fade resistant and smear proof and blah, blah, blah. And um, because they are alcohol markers, um, they're meant for people who are a little bit older. Cool, so now let's open the case and take a look at the markers themselves. I haven't tried them out yet, by the way, so this is totally my first impression. Okay, so off the bat, um, they look really similar to the Ohuhu markers. Yeah, so these are the markers. There are 80 colors and they each have their own little space in this plastic separator. We also have in the middle here. This is so neat. So typically, you know, I'll make a swatch sheet and write down the names and stuff, but they included a little swatch sheet yourself so you can fill these in and you can take a look at the actual colors. That's really, really helpful. I like that. Let's take a look at one of the actual barrels. So this is what the Parku marker looks like. It's kind of a rounded triangular shape almost. It's not completely circular and I suppose this would help prevent it from rolling around. See, it stops and so I think that's pretty handy and neat. The fine side is indicated here. It also has this gray band here that indicates that it's the fine side. And then we have the broad side over here. So this is the fine side. Then we've got the broadside or the chisel tip as sometimes it's called. On the end here, we have the color number and the color name. Let us let me let me grab the Ohuhu markers and we can take a comparison look. I dug out my Ohuhu marker that goes by the same name, Vivid Green number 46. I wonder if it isn't a manufacturing thing that they do the same names for the colors and whatnot. These markers look incredibly similar. Take a look at this. The Parku art marker is a little bit heftier. Of course, it has that unique shape to it. So it kind of, rather than being flat like the Ohuhu marker, it has more of a more of a rounded shape. They both have the gray plastic indicating the fine side. I don't know if that maybe that's just a common theme with the alcohol-based markers. I'm curious as to how their ink is going to compare. So as you can tell, the Parku marker is a little bit bigger than the Ohuhu marker, so getting the fine details, I'm not sure how that's going to affect it, but of course I'm going to be testing this marker, so then we'll have to just see. Same with the chisel side. The Ohuhu marker has more of a point, and the Parku marker has more, I don't know, has a, a, a more interesting shape. There's kind of a, a point, but there's also an angle at the top. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how these are different because the Ohu marker is so much smaller. I'm wondering maybe the Parku marker has more ink in it. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, yeah. And so I got a whole bunch of different colors. I'm pretty excited about some of these metallics. I have gold, silver. I think those are going to be fun, metallic colors. Uh, I also have some fluorescent colors. These remind me of the Ohuhu fluorescent colors a lot because I had these same ones, um, but I have a, a fluorescent coral red too this time, which is going to be pretty neat. And I'm, I'm not sure if these colors are randomly selected like the Ohuhu markers. That's what it seems like to me so far. One of these had a funny name and I wanted to point it out. Oh, this, this color is funny. This marker is called purple gray, and to me that just looks like pink, <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I don't know. I kind of like the, the silly names. They're kind of charming in their own way. Anyway, I think it is time to do some swatching and to see how the ink flows and to see like how the, the colors match up to the, the plastic and stuff. Yeah. All right, let's, let's do this part. So I have 
two markers here. I have the Parku art marker and the Ohuhu marker. Both of these are number 69 Prussian blue. And so I'm going to give them a test and see if there's really any difference between these, the ink or the way the markers write. Okay, so this is the Ohuhu marker and first the broad tip. Man, this I forgot how flexible the, the nib is in this broad tip. That's actually kind of nice. Um, let's see here. Here goes the parkour marker. The, the tip is much more solid, so the Ohuhu nib is more flexible, but I think it comes down to preference. The colors, surprisingly enough, I'm surprised that those colors, they're completely different. I was expecting to have the same ink in here. Again, the Ohuhu. Oh man, I love Ohuhu markers. <laughs> and, um, yeah. That's, that's just blowing my mind right now. The colors are completely different, but they're both Prussian blue. So even if you have a full set of Ohuhu markers, if you want more color differentiation, if you want more markers to add to your set that are relatively cheap, about 50 cents a marker, then this would be a, a good set to get because obviously the colors are not, not totally the same. I'm gonna try some blendability, I guess. Okay, these colors are not totally the same, but I think it'll do the job. Parku markers. I'm seeing if they blend together nicely. So far, that is not too bad. Okay, I'm not the best at blending, but hey, that's not bad. Now here's the Ohuhu markers and their blendability. Yeah, the nibs are just incredibly soft with the Ohuhu. Oh, that marker's out. Um, I don't think it's necessarily... Oh gosh, are all... <laughs> That's just gonna have to work. These colors I'm trying to blend together are incredibly different. Different, different colors, so... Um, I'd say the, the blendability is pretty similar. I don't say, I don't think I prefer a nib one over the other. Um, I don't mind that the parku nibs are a little bit more tough, but I also don't mind that the Ohuhu ones are a little bit more solid. I don't think it really plays that much into it, but if you, if you have a preference, of course, consider that. Yeah, I'm really loving this, this blending I've got going on there. Ruined the front of it now. Oh well. Uh, these metallic markers over here remind me quite a bit of metallic sharpies, and they also kind of remind me of the the Faber Castell uh, metallic markers. And I was kind of impressed at how pigmented and opaque the silver is. The gold is a little bit more translucent, but I'm sure if you put another layer on there, it would, it would get a little bit thicker. But yeah. Um, I haven't had an alcohol-based art metallic marker like this before, so that was pretty cool. So these fluorescent ones, to me, they feel like an actual alcohol-based marker. The Ohuhu fluorescent markers felt more like highlighters. So far, they, they feel m like more blendable. I was a little bit skeptical because the names and numbers of these markers are almost identical to Ohuhu markers, but obviously the ink is not the same. The nibs feel completely different. I think there's there's some pretty solid markers. The real test is drawing something, so I'm gonna draw a quick picture and talk a little bit about my experience with them, and then we'll do a final wrap up and uh, yeah, and then I'll, I'll see how I like them. On to the drawing. So these markers, they feel very, very similar to, to Ohuhu markers. One thing about uh, alcohol markers, just in general, is that the darker markers feel like the flow is a lot better, I suppose you could say. The lighter markers, it, they felt a little bit like dried out, but once I put it the ink down, it smoothed out and blended very well. I think it's just because they're so light and they have less pigment. It just feels like they're drier, but I don't think there really is a problem with that. In my set, I received two damaged markers, the pale green, the fine tip nib, looks like it, it had some sort of manufacturing error, and the little, um, what is this called? The little thing that goes down to, to get the ink, the, uh, the, the actual nib. There you go. The nib of the marker. It was kind of damaged and it, uh, yeah, I don't know. Very bizarre. It just is sitting in there, but there's like no ink coming out of it. And then 
my spring dim green number 174. That one was kind of messed up too on the broad side. The ink kind of exploded and was mainly contained to just this marker, but it did make kind of a bit of a mess. So that's just a couple things to keep in mind um, when purchasing this set is that a 78 were 100% totally fine. The other two were a little bit damaged, but I can still use them and um, none of them arrived dried out when I bought the Ohuhu markers. If you haven't seen the review, by the way, I'll put a card up in the corner. You can check it out later. My potato brown of the Ohuhu markers, that was in fact sent to me dried out, but it wasn't a, a big deal. It was just one marker, so I didn't get too upset. Um, I really like this plastic case. I think that it separates and holds the markers very well. In fact, I, I kind of like it. I think I like it better than the the cloth carrying case for the Ohuhu markers because this actually keeps them separated and in order. Yeah, I arranged them to be in order. And it even comes with this um pretty cool little swatch card so you can see all the different inks here. Yeah, they just seem similar to Ohuhu markers if you've liked Ohuhu markers before. I don't know why you wouldn't give these ones a try. I, I think it really comes down to preference of the shape of the marker and the case that they're delivered in because the colors are very similar, the way that they write is very similar. All in all though, I think that these markers are pretty good and if you don't have any alcohol-based markers, I think this set would be a, a really good one to at least try alcohol-based markers with. I noticed that the flexibility of the nib didn't really matter at all. In fact, the chisel tip it having that extra little angle kind of helped it make it easier to get into the smaller, tighter spaces of the drawing. And so that was definitely something cool. Yeah, I'm just overall, I'm very pleased with these markers. It just reminds me how much I love alcohol-based markers and these ones are super affo affordable. And so yeah, I'll leave a link to this product in the description. Again, I'm not sponsored, it's totally 100% just my opinion. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.